the first thing that we have to realize as educators, as parents, um, anyone that has to do anything with education from pre-K all the way through college, is that the education system is broke. It, you know, it's, it's completely broke. Um, not in a financial aspect, but as far as teaching students. Uh, you know, students all around the United States are not getting the opportunities that they should be getting uh, to learn. I don't think that the same children, uh, the same kids in New Jersey are getting the same opportunities as, as someone in Florida, and the person in Florida is not getting the same opportunities as someone in California, and California is definitely not getting the same opportunities as someone in Colorado, and so on and so forth. So when you come down to it, how is that equal? Um, you know, shouldn't we all be learning the same kind of stuff? Shouldn't we all be uh, having our own little element to what we've been learning in school? And the next problem that the education system is having and why it's broke is it's now becoming um, easy to get a high school degree. And you can thank President Bush for that because you have this No Child Left Behind Act, which actually is very unconstitutional, um, and you push the kids through. You push the kids through, and whether they know what they're doing or they don't know, you continue to push the kids through, and now you've got kids that are in high school that don't know specific or basic uh, knowledge of learning. They, they, don't know, they don't know what they're doing, which makes my high school degree and everybody else's high school degree afterwards uh, garbage, uh, complete garbage. Some people believe that they're not college material. And that's fine. That's fine, you know. Um, so they have a high school diploma to fall on. They can have a job with a high school diploma. Well, when you make the high school diploma worthless because you have people that shouldn't have graduated high school that did, um, you have to raise the level. And so now these people that have high school degrees, well, that's nothing. Now you have to get an associate's degree. And if it's easy to get an associate's degree, then you got to get a four-year degree. And what's, you know, so on and so forth. What a lot of people are doing now is they're, they're pointing the finger. They're blaming people. They're saying, well, maybe the parents need to take more responsibility. Maybe the parents need to teach their kids better maybe they need to actually take an involvement in the kids education and I agree that the you know nowadays parents um, the parents that I've spoken to in New Jersey and New York and Pennsylvania um, you get a different you get a different view you get a different feeling about them uh, some of them are very involved in their kids education and their kids succeed well some of them are very involved with their kids education and they're still having struggling problems uh, and then you got the kids that the parents are not involved with their education, and they don't want to be involved. Uh, they don't care who knows, you know, that they don't spend time with their kids during their homework, or that they, you know, they, they don't care who knows. And then you got the parents that are stuck, and this is where I really feel bad for. Uh, the parents that are stuck, where they're working two, three jobs, and they just don't have that time. You know, they're, they've been doing the best that they can for their kid. They might have some time to look over the homework, but they just don't have that time that the child needs to succeed. And I feel bad for those parents because they're the ones that get criticized and they're the ones, you know, oh, can we have this meeting? Can we have that meeting? Well, I can't come into these meetings because I can't take off of work because I'm trying to put food on the table. Uh, the education system is completely broke and we need to reevaluate it and not dumb it down because that's what it seems like we're doing. We're uh, enlarging our class sizes and we're dumbing it down. You know, oh, he can't learn this, we'll send him to this class. Oh, he can't learn that, let's do anything that we can to keep school numbers up or school testing scores up. And that, to me, is just unacceptable. It's very unacceptable. Now, you have to have different learning strategies. And there's a lot of one-way teachers out there. And, you know, they're great personalities, energetic, but you can't be a one-way teacher anymore. Um, you have to appeal to everyone. I mean, for instance, you know, say a child is not a blackboard type of kid. He can't sit in a classroom where the teacher just writes on the blackboard the whole time and lectures. Well, what are you going to do to reach that kid? And I'm sure that there's more students, now that you've been enlarging the class sizes, I'm sure that there's more students that now have those exact same feelings about that. 
and they just don't portray them. They just think I'm going to have to suck it up and I'm just, you know, this is the way this teacher teaches and um, I'm going to have to suck it up and just do the work and the best that I can. And that's, that shouldn't be the case. I'm not saying that teachers should bend over backwards to make sure that students are doing their homework or, you know, are comfortable in the environment. But if you can't teach, you can't teach one style. I, I know with the technology that we have today, uh, a lot of teachers have switched over to PowerPoint teaching. So, you know, and I think PowerPoint is a great thing. Uh, visually, it, um, you know, you're able to sit there and there's a lot of visual graphics you're ever going to come up with. So if you have people with, you know, short attention spans, the way that things are spun, um, you know, the, vi the visual graphics are phenomenal with it and it also breaks down your lesson plans very well. But not every student is that kind of student that PowerPoint's going to appeal to. You got some kids that would rather not be on PowerPoint. They would rather go back to the Blackboard style teaching. You have some kids that like the PowerPoint style teaching. Um, you're going to get different aspects all across the board and instead of trying to accommodate them and try to change it up a little bit. Teachers are just, you know, they're stuck in one way uh, teaching and you get half the class or more that fail or, you know, are doing okay, you know, C range, you know, just a borderline away from a D. And then you've got the few students that get A's and B's in the classes. That being said, a lot of people would say, well, my students aren't, a lot of my students aren't borderline. A lot of my students are getting A's and they're getting B's. Well, that's great. But the problem is, is that are you really looking at if they're learning anything? Are, are students really digesting the material well? Or are we just teaching now, and I'm not, this is not to blame the teachers, or is the curriculum now just built to teach for testing? You know? Okay, well, we're going to have a test on this, and we've got to keep the grade scores up, so teach for testing. You know, that's... Um, that's why when people come up with teachers being graded in their assignments, that's not, teachers shouldn't be getting graded. There should be a level that teachers are held up to and made sure that they're keeping that same standard level throughout their entire time. Um, the biggest thing that people are having issues with is that they're saying, oh, as soon as teachers get their tenure, they're done. They're, you know, since they're set, they don't put the energy that they put forth to get the contract. They didn't put the same energy because it takes, you know, it's a lot harder to fire them. And I've seen that. I've witnessed that. I can truly say that I have not had a teacher that I felt was like that. So did I see a lot of teachers that were like that? Do I see a lot of teachers that, you know, are going down that road? Um... And that's, that, once again, that's very unacceptable. When you don't teach to a student's level, when you don't put yourself out there and try to find different ways for that student to learn in your classroom, failing your job not only as an educator, but as someone who has sworn to educate students. Overall, I think that there's a lot of finger pointing going on and there's not a lot of solutions being put out here. So I'm putting a solution out there. People might not like that solution, but I'm, I'm putting, let's reevaluate the teachers and see how much energy and how much passion they have for what they're doing. Are they coming up with new ways to involve the class? Or are they teaching their lesson plans the same way all the time? Are they making the effort to not only have a student to teach a relationship with them but a personal relationship with their students as far as making sure that everyone's on the same page as far as the guidance counselor to the teacher to the parents is everything okay at home okay everything's okay at home is everything okay with your friends is everything so that the students inner loop everyone's in on there's no spot that goes missing for instance a student isn't having a family problem at home and since the teacher doesn't talk to the family, there's no connection. There's a gap between the two. So there's no way you're going to find out that the student's um, behavioral issues and, you know, the grades and everything else that's failing is because of the family issues, because not everyone's in on a loop. I believe that we have a lot of great teachers still out there. That's not what this is about. I believe that we have a lot of lousy teachers out there. And that is what this is about.
is revamping them. Oh, they're a nice guy, they're a nice, you know, girl, you know, or, you know, God forbid this is going on, but I'm sure it's going on in schools, is that teacher's hot, so we're going to keep her on kind of thing. Those are the kind of things that are going on in, a, in education, and they shouldn't be. So what I'm saying is that we need to reevaluate the system. It's broke. It's completely broke. We need to look back at the decisions that these teachers are making for our children, and we need to have everybody in on an inner circle when it comes to their child. The counselors, the guidance counselors talking to the parents, the parents are talking to the teacher, the teacher's talking to the parents, the teacher's talking to the guidance counselor, so that there's one big inner circle. Now I know that this is something that you're saying has already been set up and that's what they're there for, but I don't feel like that effort's being pushed far enough. And I've seen it. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it in the worst schools. As far as it goes to inner city schools and Chris Christie and his budget cuts that he's been doing, look at it this way. If you cut money from low-income areas, areas that already have high drug and crime rates, then you're going to end up having those kids, because of those cuts, joining those gangs, joining, doing drugs, making the neighborhood around it more violent, because now you've cut programs. You want to kids to have after-school activities in these kind of environments. You want kids to be involved in their school, take some sort of pride in something. Because most of these kids don't see pride in their school, don't see pride in their neighborhood, and certainly don't see pride in their parents. And they want to be something bigger than that. And the only influences that they have are the kids before them that dropped out and are now drug dealers and, are, and now have kids dealing around for them. So cutting programs in Cutting programs in general in schools is horrible, but cutting programs in low-income housing is absolutely unacceptable. So I was very happy when New Jersey uh, Supreme Court reversed the decision, and quite frankly, we're looking at Chris Christie and what he's doing now lately, and he thinks he's the king. He walks around like he's the king. Um, he's given breaks to millionaires. Christie is the classic line of either you're poor or you're rich at this point. Slowly the middle class line in this country is being divided, and Chris Christie is a great example of that. New Jersey, the state of New Jersey is a great example of that. In the long run, we need to put the politics aside, and we need to fix education. And we need to make sure that students, not only African Americans, but everyone that is an American, every student that is an American is getting the same equal education in every state, that any other child would get. Because right now, we're doing an absolute grave injustice, and the future looks scary for this country if we continue to allow students that shouldn't be passing classes to pass and graduate with diplomas. Hey guys, Martin Sacon here. You just watched my interview on education in America. Whether you liked or disliked the topics that I was talking about and were intrigued by them, go to Facebook to my fan page. The link will be provided below. And tell me what you think we need to do to fix America's education. Want to do more than that? Create a video response or go to the discussion page where I have bills and other ideas and thoughts that I have for America. And let me hear your voice. Let me hear your topics and what you want to talk about. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Remember, live life, love yourself, and stay true.